one actually looks like. Oh, he's got a bit smaller though. <laughs> Have a good match. Mark, have a good match. Okay. Yeah. First frame. Mark Williams to break. Losing your first match in a Championship League group is no great problem. If you lose your first two, you've already got your back to the wall. And that's going to be the fate that will befall one of these two players at the end of this match. Mark Williams and Ricky Walden both made losing start. <coughs> It's unusual to find yourself taking on a red to middle in your first shot in a frame. Usually if you're left one on, it's a long one. But it wasn't a great break off from Williams. Ricky Walden won. And that's a really poor shot from Walden. And I wouldn't mind betting if that was in five minutes' time, there's almost no way he'd miss it. Just maybe not quite into his rhythm yet. So ultimately, Williams could end up benefiting from what wasn't a great break-off. It paved the way for this early chance. So. There is a door not far away from that pocket that Williams was shooting into. And yeah, I'm just going to do that, Mark. 26. Well, I thought maybe someone has opened it and that has distracted him. Now it seems that it's actually some sort of noise that's coming from just off stage. Well, by the sounds of it, the noise was coming through the door, which was open. It's actually uh, a different room to the one that was being used for the first two groups. Well, the first four groups, indeed. 
in the first two weeks of Championship League earlier in January. We're still in the Rico Arena, but we've just moved up a couple of floors. And the room that we were in downstairs was a bit more secluded. Anyway, all seems to be resolved now. Also be keeping you up to date on the other match that's going on at the moment. Ben Wollaston, who uh, beat Mark Williams in his first match earlier today, against Joe Perry, who was beaten by David Gilbert in a match that finished only about 20 minutes ago. Whatever he's eyeing up, he's not sure about it. Is he looking at a plant to the left corner? Whoa. Well, he certainly was. It's not going to be of any great benefit to him. Mark Williams won. Came to the table 26 behind, but you look at the way these balls are placed. Just one good shot here. Suddenly he could become quite a big favourite for this frame. Been a regular competitor in the Championship League over the years, but 
Only been in the winner's group once, that was 2014, when he actually was the first player into it. He won group one. And in the winner's group, he won three of his six matches and only missed out on the semi-finals by one frame. Last year, he was a semi-finalist in the first group he played, which was Group 6. A frame away from getting to the final, lost in a decider to Ryan Day. And he had one last go in Group 7, finished fifth, and that was the end of that. Eighteen. Ricky Walden, 19. Well, he had to work very hard for not that many points there. He never really felt he was in prime position. And that always catches up with you eventually. Ben Wollaston continuing his positive start to the group. He's won the first frame against Joe Perry on the other table. This is the sort of situation which was quite common in the game around about 30 years ago. If there was a ball over a corner pocket like this, you can often see the Reds gradually, very slowly, being worked into congregating around it. And the players would be quite happy to engage in that. Nowadays, players like to avoid it by playing a more attacking safety shot. used to be so many frames that you'd see with both players trying to make the slightest of contact with the Reds like a sort of penny falls machine but in this case trying not to make the ball the colour over the pocket drop in Let's open things up a bit. Whoa. 
Well, he's had a little bit of good fortune there. The little flick on the red, as he acknowledged with his hand, appears to have left him on the pink. And with the red so close to the pink, he's a chance to bring them all out into play here. So this shot could really decide the frame. Foul. Well, that's absolutely extraordinary. Mark Williams, six. If you'd asked me to suggest 10 or even 20 things that might happen there, red, uh, the cue ball and pink both going in <laughs> would not have featured on that list. And yet, he's not been punished at all for that mistake. So a surprising miss by Williams. That's Walden straight back in. And really, the big issue now is the red on the ball cushion. Seven. And it's a good bit out from the cushion, so... Eight. Every chance that this could be a frame-winning break. So everything out in the open now. Walden, a very clear favourite. This is really the last thing that you could see any chance of it going wrong. Even that was pretty unlikely. So it just needs the ball colours now. 22. Well, what a let off. That bizarre in off on the pink handed Williams a chance. But he just handed it straight back to Walden, who has accepted it gladly. Doesn't matter about that. On the first frame. So Ricky Walden leads Mark Williams by one frame to nil. Let's have a look in on the other table. I told you Ben Wollaston has won the opening frame against Joe Perry. Wollaston got in first in this second frame. Only made nine. And this uh, looks like a pretty good chance for Perry now. <coughs> Only got the call to come in last night. After Barry Hawkins withdrew. 
Still battling the flu that's been affecting him since before the Masters. And happy memories associated with this tournament for Joe Perry. He was its first ever winner back in 2008. So Perry looking very good here for one all. Second frame. Ricky Walden to break. Still some way to go, but such a good chance for him. Couldn't place the Reds better. So I'll let you know how he gets on there as we get frame two underway here. Williams has had a very good place in his career these days. Knows that his best days are probably behind him. Former world number one, two-time world champion. 17. Won all of the really big titles. Couple of Masters, couple of UKs. And without doubt, one of the top ten players of all time. But he's enjoying a real renaissance at the moment. 24. At the age of 42, only five, five players have earned more ranking points than him this season. I think he feels anything he achieves now is just a bonus. He still enjoys playing, still enjoys coming to tournaments to compete. And is very pleased to still be so competitive at a time when the financial rewards in the game are at a stratospheric level. And the revival he's enjoyed over the last year or so has taken him back into the world's top ten. And at almost 43 years of age, that's pretty impressive. 41. Fifty-four. 
55. Bit scrappy in the first frame, but looks like being a clean kill in the second. Just needs one more red after this black. Seventy. Seventy one. Well, there's 500 pounds for the highest break in each group. Williams has the chance to set a very good target here. Ricky Walden has already set a pretty good one. He had a 140 in the only frame he won against Martin Gould this morning. And this is a potential one four five for Williams. Ninety four. Well, not now, as he's taking the pink, but still, 144 would be a good target. It does mean he can't equal Ryan Day's 145 from Group 1 as the highest break of the Championship League overall, but there's no special prize for that. 101. So that's the third century we've seen already in this group. 102. One of the most prolific makers of century breaks the game's ever seen. And back in 2005, he joined a very exclusive club. Players who have made a 147 at the Crucible. 122. When Mark Williams is on form, he makes the game look absurdly easy. That's what he's done here. Been out of ideal position a couple of times, but recovered it very well. 131. Although there's a long way to go in this group, 137. 144 would be more likely than not good enough to take that highest break prize. 144. Vintage Mark Williams then, he got in with a long red and made a 144 total clearance to level the match against Ricky Walden. It's one all. Also one all over on the other table and into frame three there now. Between Ben Wollaston and Joe Perry. Two players who both got a late call up to come in for this group.
Sam Wollaston, a player with an extraordinary record this season. He's got through the first round of all 12 ranking tournaments so far in the current campaign. And indeed, with the German Masters coming up next week, he's already got through two rounds of that to qualify. But it looks like he's left a red on to the corner for Perry. First round. Mark Williams to break. Anyway, back here after that marvellous 144 total clearance, Mark Williams gets us underway again in the third frame. confident shot if ever I saw one. that Ben Wollaston has won his first match in every ranking event he's played this season and he's played in all of them. Mark Williams hasn't played in all of them but of the nine he has played 14. he's won not only his first match but his second match every time. 15. And he's nearly always gone further than that. He's been in at least the last 16, seven times in ranking events this season. Twenty-three. Made six quarter-finals. Turned two of those into semi-finals. And one of those, the Northern Ireland Open in Belfast, he went all the way. Yan Bing Tao, his opponent, was a frame away from becoming the youngest ever ranking tournament winner. But Williams came through in the end to deny him 9-8. Nice well. Forty six. Forty seven. 
And that shot there, opening out the Reds a little more, has turned this from a chance which might be good enough for him to win the frame from it to one where he'll expect to win the frame. Sixty-three. He's in full flow now, and just another red and black will be enough. Sixty-four. Nothing unusual about seeing back-to-back -back centuries at the top level of the modern game. But you don't see back-to-back -back total clearances all that often. You might be about to here. 77. Eighty-four. Eighty-five. This is what Williams used to do with such regularity 15, 20 years ago. Just relentlessly pummel his opponents. Ninety-two. Ninety-three. This for back-to-back -back centuries, and if he gets it right and lands on the red, odds on another total clearance. One hundred. Oh, what a shame. Mark Williams, one hundred. As I say, it's rare enough you see back-to-back -back total clearances. I thought we were going to see it there. Not quite, but it is another century for Mark Williams. He follows his one four four in the second frame with a one hundred in the third. He leads Ricky Walden by two frames to one. Also 2-1 on the other table. Joe Perry has just won the third against Ben Wollaston. Perry looking for his first win after losing to Dave Gilbert earlier. We'll just have a bit of a look at that now. Nothing potted yet in frame four. who was a quarter finalist in the UK Championship beaten by Stephen Maguire it was his second ranking quarter final of the season not been much else to write home about but it's been okay Anyway, Wollaston with the first chance there. As we return to see if Mark Williams can continue this onslaught Ricky or if Ricky Walden can do something to stem the tide.
Pô. Well, the last two times he's knocked in a long red. He's gone on to make a century both oh, times. This time, having to settle for the safety, but he's got nice and tight to the green. And doesn't it put pressure on your safeties when your opponent is playing as well as Mark Williams has in this match? You know how costly it could be if you don't get it right. On the miss. Mark Williams, seven. Yeah. Because it's so tight to the green, that makes it fairly straightforward to replace. Same again. Foul from the miss. Mark Williams, seven. More or less the same this time, just a little shorter. But it wasn't heading on the right line anyway, even if it hit it harder. Mark Williams four. And this time he won't be asked to play it again. Well. Generally in a situation like that it's all about trying to get out of the tough spot you're in, but giving away twenty two points like that that's enough to become something of a factor. You don't mind giving away a couple of four-point penalties. It's unlikely to make a big difference in the frame, but when you miss four times and two of those you hit the black, it's giving your opponent a useful head start before he even gets to the table. Seven. Isn't it funny how often you get the little bit of luck with the split 22. when you're playing really well? Oh. 
23. And if you watched Williams' match against Kyron Wilson in the quarterfinals of the Masters the other night, you might be wondering where all this form was then. Well, that isn't a matter of luck. That's just a really good shot, the way he's played that. 28. Perfect split, really. 29. Yeah, that match at the Masters came off the back of Williams knocking out the world champion Mark Selby in the previous round, but he just didn't perform at all against Kyron Wilson. If he'd played anything like this in that match, it might have been a very different story. Instead of getting beaten by six frames to one in what was, 37. with all due respect, arguably the worst performance that any player produced in any match at the Masters last week. Forty-four. Sixty-seven in front, but still ninety-one on the table. Forty-five. Yeah, man. Cheers, thanks. Will be a surprise if he doesn't add the few remaining balls he needs. 52. Thank you. 53. So that should be the end of that. And that red makes absolutely certain. Now, wouldn't he love to make it a hat-trick of centuries? I think he really enjoys the fact that he can still play to such a high level. After all this time. Now in his 26th season as a professional. Seventy-six. Mark Williams, seventy-six. Really good performance then from Mark Williams. No century to finish, but he'd already had two. A one-four-four total.